In this video, we're going to create an app that implements a post confirmation Lambda trigger. When a user signs up, using Cognito, we would like to automatically invoke a Lambda function, passing in the information about the user into the event of the function. Within the Lambda, we will then call DynamoDB, passing in all of the user's metadata and saving it in the database. We'd also like to create an AWS AppSync GraphQL API that allows other users and admin users to query for not only their data, but for administrative users to be able to update and delete data within the API if they are in the admin group. Now that we understand how the app works, let's go ahead and get started. We'll start by creating a new React app using NPX. Next, we'll change into the new directory and install AWS Amplify and at AWS Amplify UI React. To create a new Amplify project, run Amplify init. Here, give the project a name, the environment a name, choose your default text editor, and then choose the defaults for the rest of the options. When prompted for an AWS profile, choose the profile that you'd like to use. Next, we'll add authentication by running Amplify Add Auth. We'll choose the manual configuration so that we can enable the Cognito trigger as well as create the admin group. We'll choose the default for the authentication services, the default for the project name, the default for the identity pool, and choose no for unauthenticated logins. For third-party authentication providers, we'd also choose no. We can choose the default for the user pool, the default for the sign-in method, and when we're prompted for user pool groups, we'll choose yes. For the group name, we'll choose admin, and then when prompted for adding another group, we'll choose no. For the admin queries API, we'll choose no since we'll be creating one using GraphQL. We'll choose the default for the rest of these options, and then when prompted for an OAuth flow, we'll choose no. Next, we'll be prompted to configure a Lambda trigger, and here we'll choose yes. For the type of trigger, we'll choose post confirmation. For the functionality, we'll be creating our own module. When prompted for editing the function, we'll choose yes. This should open the code for the function, which is located in the Amplify backend function folder. We'll start by removing all of the code and then importing the AWS SDK and creating a new instance of DynamoDB. We'll create an async handler function since we'll be using a promise to talk to DynamoDB. Next, we'll create some logic to check to see if there is an event request user attributes sub property. If there isn't, we'll log out the error and call context.done passing in null in the event. Next, we'll create a params object with an item property and a table name. The item will hold the metadata from the user, like their ID, their username, and their email address. The table name will be coming from an environment variable set in Lambda. Finally, we'll be calling dynamodb.putItem, passing in the params, and logging out whether or not the operation was successful. To allow the operation to continue to Cognito, we'll call context.done, passing in null in the event. Next, we'll create the AWS AppSync API by running Amplify Add API. Here, we'll give the API a name and choose Amazon Cognito User Pool as the authorization type. When given the option for a schema template, we'll just choose single object with fields, but we'll be updating this anyway. Here, we'll replace the existing model with a user model. For the authorization rules, we'll be setting the access type to groups, setting a group of admin, as well as owner access, allowing the users that are signed in to be able to read their own user information. The fields of the user will be matching the fields that Cognito gives us, 
providing us the ID, the username, and the email address. To deploy everything, we can now run amplify push dash dash y. Once the services have been deployed, we can open up our app in the Amplify console by running Amplify console and choosing Amplify console. Here, let's go ahead and choose API and then click on View and App Sync. Next, click on Data Sources and copy the name of the DynamoDB user table. Going back to the Amplify console, we'll click on Function and then open the function in the Lambda console. Here we'll be setting the environment variable for the user table. To do so, scroll down to Environment Variables and click Edit. Here we'll click Add Environment Variable, creating a variable called User Table, passing in the name of the user table. Next, click on Permissions and then click on the role name that's listed in the execution role. Here, we'll be giving permission for our Lambda function to interact with DynamoDB. To do so, click on Add Inline Policy and then click on JSON. Here, we'll be setting the effect to allow, the only action being the DynamoDB put item action. And then for the resource ARN, we'll be needing to get this from DynamoDB. To get the ARN from DynamoDB, we'll go to our AWS AppSync console and click on the link to the DynamoDB table. Here, we can scroll down and then copy the resource ARN to our clipboard. Next, we'll click Review Policy, give the policy a basic name, and then click Create Policy. Now we should be able to test it out. To do so, we'll go back to our client project and open index.js to configure Amplify. Here we'll import Amplify from AWS Amplify, the configuration from our AWS exports file, and then we'll call amplify.configure passing in the config. In app.js, we'll import the with authenticator and amplify sign out UI components from at AWS Amplify slash UI React. In our main app component, we'll go ahead and create an amplify sign out button to allow users to sign out. Next, we'll update the default export to be the with authenticator passing in the app component. To test this out, we can go back to our terminal and run npm start. Here, we'll go ahead and create a new account. Once we've confirmed our account, we should be able to go to our DynamoDB table and see the user saved into the table. Next, let's go into the AWS AppSync console to test out if we can query for our own user data. To do so, we'll click on Login with User Pools, selecting the client ID, and passing in the username and password for the user that we'd like to sign in with. Here, we'll create a basic list users query, returning the items array with the ID, the username, and the email for every user in the array. Here we see that we are able to return our own user information. Next, let's sign out and create another user with a different email address. When we go back to the AppSync console, we should still only be able to query for our own user information. 
Next, let's add one of the users into the admin group. To do so, go to the AWS Amplify console, click on Authentication, and then click on View Incognito. Here, we'll click on Users and Groups and add one of the users to the admin group. Now we'll go back to the AppSync console, sign in with this user, and then see that we can query for all of the users in the API. To make sure that this is working, we can now sign out, sign back in with the regular user, and see that they are only able to return the user information about themselves.